Yeah, Martin here, thank you for joining me for this week's project video. I hope you're all well and you've had amazing creative weeks and weekends in your workshops. Now this week I thought I would go for something a little bit more spindly. You've seen a lot of bowls, bowls recently, so I thought today I would have a go at something on a spindle orientation. And it's going to be a sort of a, um, a hollow form vase with a very simple line to it. Not sure if I'm going to add any colour yet, but this piece of uh, sycamore really could lend itself beautifully. There's a lovely ripple running through it. And there's also this um, rather large feature, which is going to need a little bit of filling. So I'll probably use copper or bronze or brass powder in there at some point during the process um, and then decide if I'm going to put any colour on it. Now putting colour over the top of CA glue and stuff could be could be a mistake but if I decide that we're going to throw some colour on it um, you'll see. It is exactly 200 millimetres long and there's um, a 30 mil tenon sitting in the piranha jaws here on this um, Axminster Evolution chuck. In the tailstock, I've got um, that's a 30 mil force and a bit, 30 mil just over an inch. So, first off, I'm going to hollow it out or make a depth with the, uh, with the force and a bit as far down as I can go, really, um, which will leave me enough room to um, turn the bottom down into a, into a nice cone shape. So let's get on with that first. I've got the lathe running at um, a shave under 600 RPM. So I'm going to very carefully ease this down. So with that done and the hole being drilled down to roughly this mark here, I can begin to shape the outside of the piece and uh, I've got enough room here for a bit of a waste block which is what I'm going to form in a minute. In fact I'll do it now. So just leave myself a little mark as to where I want to uh, part off which will be And then I'm going to take um, an old bowl gouge, which is quite short, with a 45 degree bevel on it. I'm going to roughly turn the outside down to a vague shape that I would like. Now, that is as much as I want to do at, at, uh, at the moment. So what I'm going to do next is I need to set up uh, the Simon Hope hollowing jig. I've only used it once before, well, twice. So this is going to be the third time. So I'm not going to bore you with how it's set up because Mike, Mike Walt did a fantastic video on um, how to set it all up. So I'm going to set it up. There we are, that's the, that's the arm set up and I've just done a little test cut there. And um, it took seven minutes to set up um, and change the height of it and stuff. And uh, oh, yeah, brilliant, love it so far. So um, now I'm gonna hollow it out um, as far down as I possibly can with the little six mil carbide cutter. I know I don't like carbide, but with hollowing, it's an absolute godsend, I'm led to believe. 
So let's, um, I'm going to change the camera angle and um, let's see just how, uh, how easy it is to um, follow out this piece. So the lathe is floating around the uh, 1000 RPM mark. I've got the cutter set at a little angle just below centre. Now before I use the scraper to uh, smooth out the inside, I'm going to finish off the outside shape a little bit with, um, with the gouge again so I, can, so I know how, I, how thick I can make the walls all the way down. Because I want a little taper on the bottom here, but not too much. There's my final depth, so I can taper down a little bit, then I'll take another, another depth mark so I can work out where I can round off the bottom. And there is a little bit of a wobble um, on the piece now because I hadn't actually tightened the chuck up completely properly. So, whoops. Now I know depth-wise, this um, this piece is the full the full extension of uh, my vernier calipers. So there's the bottom, and I'm going to keep replacing that mark so I don't so I don't lose it completely. And now I'm going to move on to a spindle gouge to get in there to start rounding the bottom a bit. Right now I'm going to start <laughs> now I'm going to start scraping. I've not as I said I've not um, used used um, the hollowing jig much before so it's all still a little bit new but I have set my wall width you can't see it particularly well on uh, on that camera but this isn't a how to use the video but you can see the laser at the top here I've got the laser system on so I can start scraping off the inside now. Is giving me some trouble so I've got a little bit more room down here that I can taper off which is good I like that and then I can get in and um, sand it down so let's taper off down here a little bit more I'm going to 
sand the inside now, and then um, then we can move on. Well, this piece is giving me a bit of a ride. Um, I've sanded the inside down and I've applied some sanding sealer and that's where I'm going to leave it for the time being. But I'm rounding off the bottom of, of the piece and I want to have a teeny tiny little foot. Um, and I'm almost there, but you, I think you can see here, I've I had a rather large catch um, with a detail gouge. So what I'm doing now is I'm just smoothing that off a little bit so I've got a little bit more room to play with down here um, so I can get the sander in there. So I'm using a spindle gouge wherever I put it. There. And I'm just making that, just trying to give myself a little bit more access. And that's about as much as I can do because I can't reach with this particular gouge. So I can now stop that and um, sand it. Right, okay. Um, I've decided I'm not going to do brass or bronze or copper. I'm going to do aluminium. So I've got myself a little bit of aluminium powder. And I need a spoony thing. So I'm gonna grab a bit of paper. No, I'm not. I'm gonna grab a, I'm gonna grab a sanding pad, an old sanding pad and some thin CA glue. Now I've got it, because I've decided I'm gonna add color, I need to be really, really careful how I add this, uh, this glue. And hopefully some's going to come out. Whoop! Yep. I'm going to scoop up a little bit of the aluminium powder. And then rub it in. Yep, that's gone hard. Now I can put the mask back on and sand it off. Now I can go there. Now I can go down all the grits to 400 before I start applying colour. Now why did I take that off? To start applying the colour I'm going to spray it all with my intrinsic black dye. Let that dry and then sand it back. I'm going to stop for a cup of coffee. So with coffee over and done with, I've got my blue, my midnight blue shade, which I want to put down the bottom here and kind of feather it up a little bit. So I'm going to use the spray cap 
again just protect the chuck a little bit and put some of the blue down there that's come out nice I like that speckled effect and then I'm going to use let's just wipe that off the aluminium then I'm going to use stone blue and then just with the lathe stationery I'm going to start rubbing it in down the bottom Wow Can you see that? That's going to look absolutely fabulous I'm happy with that and I can just let it dry for a little while but I might give it a little bit of a helping hand with uh, with a hot air gun and I'm very um, very pleased with how that's turned out hmm. now it's dry the piece looks a little bit flat and a little bit dull so I'm gonna apply a little bit of my preferred whoops a little bit of my preferred Danish oil and that will uh, liven those colours up considerably as I think, or, uh, as I hope you can see on the video they, they are really coming up nice and vibrantly and ooh, yeah lovely a couple more coats of that let it sink in and then it's important that I let it dry Now I'm going to use a spray sealer over the top, a couple of coats of that, cut it back very, very lightly before I apply the final finish. Right, and now the sanding sealer's dry, I'm cutting it back with a Scotch-Brite pad or a Niweb pad or whatever you've got so you've got a nice smooth surface onto which you can apply your final finish which uh, unsurprisingly I'm going to be using Hampshire Sheen high gloss and I'm going to apply it with the lathe spinning at a moderate speed I've already done the inside So with a little bit of the wax on a kitchen towel. And then spin it nice and quickly. That has come up an absolute treat. I am very, very pleased with that. The only downside with it is a tiny bit of the aluminium has come out, but I'm not gonna worry about that at all. Right, all I need to do next is part it off carefully and uh, then we'll be finished. 
Well, here's the piece off the lathe. I'm so pleased with how it has turned out. And uh, I'm really pleased with how the uh, Simon Hope Easy Arm Duke has performed as well. This wasn't a review on it. It was just me using it for the third time. If you are interested in a review and a more detailed how-to, then head over to Simon Hope's um, channel or Mike Walt's channel as he did a superb video about it. But let me put this up here so you can see it uh, see it turning round. So yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any comments or queries, leave them in the box below and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. But for now, thanks again for watching. Please do like, share and subscribe and I will see you again soon for another project video. Thanks very much. Bye for now.